and Padma Rao Welcome to World is One, Reformers and Rebels, a show that brings you both revolutionaries and renegades, thought leaders, dynamic men and women who have changed their lives and are changing the lives of others. Today on the show, we have Mr. K. Padmanathan, commonly known as K.P. Once he was the gun runner for one of the world's deadliest terrorist groups, the LTTE of Sri Lanka. But today, he's a repentant father and heading three orphanages in the northern part of Sri Lanka. He was a reclusive figure, of whom there were hardly any pictures except for a much used one in dark glasses. War reporters covering the long and brutal civil war in Sri Lanka against the terror group Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam LTTE, could often meet the top tiger leadership, its chief Velupilai Prabhakaran even on two occasions. But the man who provided the weapons and raised mammoth funds for the LTTE used aliases, changed venues across the globe and was only known as KP. Selvaturai Kumaran Patmanathan was born in the northeastern harbour of Kanke Santurai on the Jaffna Peninsula and he was attracted to the LTTE and its idea of a separate state even as he finished school. Years later, and though the father of a child himself, the LTTE's former gun runner KP continued to turn a blind eye to the tiger's chilling practices of suicide bombing, swallowing cyanide capsules to avoid capture and pushing child soldiers and civilians to the battlefront. The war ended in 2009. KP was arrested in Malaysia just months later. But by the time he was rehabilitated and partially released from custody to run three orphanages in the erstwhile tiger stronghold Kilinochi, repentance may have come too late. A total of 120,000 people had been killed. Ironically, mostly Tamil men, women and children. The very people in whose name KP and his LTTE had waged a long and brutal war. Welcome to the show, Mr. Padmanathan. Yeah. From being a key member of the uh, Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam to an orphanage father is, is quite a leap, is quite a turbulent story. Uh, start at the beginning, tell us the story. Why did you join the LTTE? It's, a, uh, it's an environment like that when we was a, when we was a student. Actually, here the, um, the youths, uh, they start this uh, organization. So mostly that time the northern province, uh, most of the students, they join with uh, LTT or either other movement. So I am the one. What was the motivation for you? Why did you want, feel like you wanted to join? Actually the, uh, the some political situation that time uh, very bad actually the the riots and uh, the st Tamil student they are affected from the standardization and uh, our political leaders they uh, made the <laughs> emotional politics so the this is the environment that time uh, create the situation like that. So how did you meet Velu Pillai Prabhakaran? What was he like at that time and, and why did he inspire you? Yeah, that um, he's a hero at that time actually. <laughs> he's um, famous uh, through this, uh, uh, among the Tamil youths. So that um, situation in uh, Northern Province are uh, emotional and the uh, students are uh, trying to do something, what they can do. So, uh, me and some friends, uh, we uh, try to meet uh, someone. Uh, so, that time actually, the uh, Mr. Amrudalingam, opposition leader, uh, he arranged this meeting with the Prabhagara. So, we took that opportunity and we met him. What was he like? Describe him, sir. He is uh, very uh, young and active and that uh, very serious. Uh, he is a, as a leader, he is a very strict man. At that time, what was he aiming for? Actually, that <laughs> uh, the youths uh, we are aiming for the separate states. Mr. Patmanathan, when exactly did the LTTE go from being a so-called freedom-fighting group to a full-blown terrorist organization? 
from beginning uh, very keen that uh, uh, we uh, we uh, everyone uh, follow the um, system and uh, uh, we never uh, think about hurt our people or hurt any other leaders so this one uh, mostly the this thing happened after the uh, uh, 90s uh, this one the um, uh, the reason how they change their uh, themselves <laughs> actually it's uh, um, uh, maybe the they don't have the choice i think you then went to malaysia why did you choose uh, malaysia what exactly did you do there actually the uh, from 2003 uh, i i was sidelined uh, sidelined within the organization organizations and um, i i tried to uh, make peace and to find a political solution from 2003 it's failed uh, then the, um, actually 2007 i think 2007 uh, i uh, i went to malaysia so till 2007 from 1983 which is more or less when the war began you were in here in uh, in jaffna or in in the northern province no that uh, i am uh, from nine from 1990 i am uh, abroad actually i am in thailand from i operate from there so you went to thailand in 1990 1990 uh, what made you go to thailand in 1990 you were already part of the organization at yeah, that time yeah that uh, that's right uh, actually the um, i got some uh, work over there the part of the organization so i went to uh, thailand what was what were you told to do for the organization actually that um, uh, many things that uh, example the uh, shipment and uh, for the um, uh, what they need actually of even, weapons even uh, from medicine to uh, clothes and everything or oh, that kind of shipment or weapons already it's all everything also everything money whatever they needed yeah money everything so when you went to thailand uh, sir what job did you take up there yeah that uh, actually we 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 start up this uh, shipping lines so we also know that india played a role in the uh, evolution of the ltt so to speak um, could you describe that role that india played it's uh, actually the when the mrs kandi period uh, in sri lanka the uh, that time the uh, political environment a little different because the jr yavatana here president and also sri lanka have a good relationship with the israel so that time the india uh, with the russian bloc so this is uh, against uh, indian policy the same time the um, here the tamils issue also it's a boiling issue in india so our leaders example uh, mr amlalingam including the all political leaders met uh, mrs kandi and she tried to negotiate with the sri lankan government uh, beginning and the same time that uh, already this uh, milton group started here so she uh, asked the raw people to uh, support the organizations and the same time that um, actually the indian government they plan to keep them in under their control but the, this one uh, so they gave the full uh, support training and weapons and money and everything so this is a starting point 
with the India. So you mean you're saying that uh, India got involved primarily because it saw Colombo's relations with the West as a kind of rival. Uh, there was a rivalry there. Also, the uh, India always uh, the neighboring big brother. So they always uh, like to. Uh, it is a global uh, politics. So the India always. Uh, keep the eye on Sri Lanka. So it's, um, uh, we, uh, we have to accept the reality. At that time, sir, I remember in, uh, in the early 90s or the late 80s actually, I did meet uh, Velupilai Prabhakaran in an Ashoka hotel room. Yeah. Uh, do you remember that episode? Can you just narrate it briefly? Yeah. What happened? Ashoka Hotel. Yes, in Delhi. He, in was, Delhi. he was a guest of the government uh, in Delhi at uh, the time. Met uh, Mr. Rajiv Gandhi. That's right, yeah. Actually, the, this uh, Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi, his, uh, um, his uh, dream are something different. But he tried to do it uh, in Sri Lanka. Actually, he want to make a peace and he want to build a good relationship with uh, Sri Lanka. He's a young, dynamic leader. And at uh, the same time, the, he also want to make, uh, satisfy with the Tamil side, our side. So he invite all leaders, the, um, even the political and military. Militants. He met the other groups. They already example Tello and plot and everything. They already accept for the Indian proposal, such as uh, um, Indian Accord. Uh, but Prabhakar initially, initially he don't not accept that uh, proposal. Uh, you speak of the Indo Sri Lanka Peace Accord. The peace Accord. The, so the Prime Minister invite him. To Delhi and meet him, and he explained that uh, what is going to happen. Uh, then the Prabhagaran accept, okay, then that uh, uh, Indian peacekeeping force also arrived here, and the Prabhagaran also arrived in Vietnam. Um, at that time, you were still in Sri Lanka, it was just shortly before you left, because you left in 1990, you told me. No, I am in uh, India at that time. Also. Oh, you were also in India at that time, and uh, can you do? You, can you recollect the uh, the time when the IPKF came into Sri Lanka? Yeah. What was it like initially? How did the Tamils of the northern uh, province feel when the Indian peacekeeping force arrived? Yeah, in the beginning, the people are welcome the Indian IPKF by day by day. Actually, the um, LTT strategy also changed. They are uh, changed against uh, IPKF. Why, sir? Uh, the Prabhakaran, he uh, never uh, accept any force. So that uh, LTT against uh, IPKF. So the people follow the LTT. That's happened. Now we go back to uh, Thailand where you uh, were sent on this job of uh, setting up the shipping company yeah. and uh, supplies, getting supplies for the LTTE. Take us through that process, uh, Mr. Padmanathan. How does it work exactly? You go abroad and you, you collect money uh, for, a, for a renegade organization. How uh, you buy weapons, you transfer the weapons uh, to the organization. How did it work? It's it's uh, actually it's it's not a, a, a difficult issue. It's a normal uh, global uh, the practice. Practice. Uh, if you you anyone can open a shipping company, anyone can operate. So it's a normal operation. So it is not much scrutinized? No. But where did you get the weapons from, for instance? Oh, the, the weapons, uh, the, in the, that time, the many market are 
all over the world, no? the, uh, from Lebanon up to everywhere they have. So they would send them to you and then you would, or they would just, how did, you know, let's say you got from Lebanon something, then something yeah, from that, somewhere uh, else. Sometimes we send our ship to uh, collect the weapons. So your shipping company was not just a front, you actually had ships. How many ships were there? Yeah, that time we got the something, the, I think 2003, we got around uh, 13 ships, I think. And where did the money come from to buy the ships? It's actually most of uh, money from MDR, <laughs> Tamil Nadu chief minister. <laughs> so that must have been quite a lot of money. Yes. Coming there. And uh, then, the, so the weapons, you would send the <coughs> ships to collect them and then they would come to Sri Lanka. Yeah. Where would they come in Sri Lanka? Oh, they, via India, they came. Uh, sometime that uh, we send the even container to India and the Tamil Nadu chief minister, former chief minister, he clear the container and hand over to us. And we took that one to uh, South India and transport to here. And here meaning where would you land? Where would the ships uh, mostly land? Mostly the, the by boat we took to the <coughs> BVT, this coastal area. Right. Uh, uh, where exactly? Well, BVT, Velvetura, Pravara. Velvetura, yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. Velvetura, yeah. How would you manage to get past the radars of the Sri Lankan ships? Um, that time uh, the Sri Lankan Navy is uh, not, not uh, sophisticated. What kind of weapons are we talking about and how exactly, what was the trajectory, how did they get smuggled into Sri Lanka? They're mostly the, what they used here. Uh, like guns or? Yeah, guns and... Pistols and... Artilleries and... So one of the most awful inventions, if one can call it that, of the LTTE was the use of child soldiers. Also the, uh, the invention, so to speak, of the suicide vest, suicide bombing, and also uh, the use of cyanide capsules, which the carters wore around their necks to swallow in case they were captured. When and how were these uh, ideas developed? It's actually, I think, the, after 1990s. Because uh, the the beginning, we are very serious to we are not accept the, everyone to join the LTT. Very strict uh, sc scanning system. But this one, when they try to change to be the regular army, the shortage of the fighters. So then they start to. Uh, take this child soldiers. So they were taking children as young as what age, sir? Even I heard that uh, even the 13 years, 12 years. And was it initially by force or was it more a voluntary? Uh... Uh, in the initially the by voluntary, but uh, the last stage by force. And uh, the suicide bomb bombing, this was also a, a very grisly invention of the LTTE. Uh, how did they start? Where did, who got this idea? The cyanide capsules that they wore, the suicide vests. How did they, who developed this idea? It's actually the, I heard that uh, Prabhagaran, he got this idea from IRA. That time they got some IRA and PLO, some attack. So that uh, idea he implement in LTT. But the LTT came to be known as the inventors of the suicide bombing because IRA didn't use them. Uh, the uh, PLO, that uh, not exactly that uh, they use the suicide uh, bomb, but the, some ideas, example the explosive and the PLO, they hijack the planes and stadium, something. So that uh, uh, LTT got the, some ideas from uh, that side. How did they prepare? After all, you know, when you're an 18 year old and you are told to wear a suicide vest and go and blow somebody up and yourself up, how did they prepare these kids mentally? Were there drugs involved? No, 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 not the drugs actually, absolutely, no. It's a kind of, you know, the, the Tamil people have the, um, uh, they are uh, 
how to say the um, they respect uh, the leader as a god so the, this uh, emotional feeling uh, so the um, they utilize it's actually the the it's a brain was can say it's a brain was then and not uh, not the not involved in any trucks or anything did you did were there any people within the ltte uh, i remember you told me this yourself who felt uncomfortable about these ideas suicide bombing cyanide capsules so did you object and what was the reaction when you objected yeah that this um, even the mr anton balasingham he also objected this ideas and uh, he also tried to stop this one but um, inside the organization uh, they mostly they support this ideas and also the um, myself i try to uh, stop these things but can nobody <laughs> listen prabhakaran did not listen no he's uh, it's a uh, absolutely his uh, own uh, ideas the spot yeah so but mr padpanathan you are a father yourself how did you feel you saw you looked at your child and then you saw these children just being forcibly dragged off into war how was it for you and how did your family feel sir did they not know didn't you feel any remorse uh, actually the uh, my family they don't know at i am time. at that time i am involving this involving this uh, organization one thing Uh, as a father that uh, i mean you would see your own child yes, and then you would yes, see these children yes i i feel that uh, it's a very bad and this one we we had to stop this uh, child soldiers also <coughs> the student they they had to study many many thing that's uh, we try to <coughs> uh, stop this uh, side so yes But unfortunately no one listen was there any stage during this long war uh, mr padmanathan when you felt that you wanted to end it you wanted it all to end from 2003 uh, i myself and even uh, mr balasingham also that uh, uh, the ltt that uh, in uh, from 2003 uh, the we we gone the maximum so time also so long and the world environment that change so we cannot uh, fight against the world so you speak of 911 uh, specifically yes. as a turning point turning point so we try we have to negotiate some point that uh, we cannot uh, fight against the world can you describe the role of norway sir because norway is a western country that played a significant role yeah. and norway has been accused of shielding the ltt yes. and its leadership right till the very last minute in may 2009 could you describe that sir yeah that uh, actually the norway also trying to stop the war uh, norway uh, uh, they the especially the eric solheim he tried to until the last to save these people with me and um, actually they are playing the significant role but the one thing we failed our side the provagaran side no have any positive uh, move they stand on their their position even the india also trying to 
solve this problem. The, uh, it's, uh, uh, unfortunately, the, our leadership, they're not uh, flexible. There is a lot of criticism about the West's involvement overall, you know, by sheltering uh, people who fled from here, even after the war, a lot of LTT guarders. What is, what is it that makes them, uh, made the Western countries take on uh, and support and continue to allow, let's say, transfer of money uh, to the LTT at that time by separatist-minded diaspora in the Western countries? What was this uh, that made it so attractive for them? The, actually, the Western countries, uh, if you look, uh, even uh, from America and uh, other countries, they gave a opportunity to LTT. Even the they uh, don't give the opportunity to Hamas. Even they win the um, election. The world, uh, especially the West, they gave the good opportunity to LTT. I now come to the larger picture, Mr. Padmanathan. Uh, I've often heard, in fact, other rebels in other countries have told me that there was a kind of a, a club of rebels. Uh, for instance, that the LTT was linked to the Maoists in, in Nepal and also to the Maoists in India, uh, both underground uh, movements which use uh, and, or have used violence in the past, in the case of Nepal. Uh, did, what sort of a club was this? Can you describe what you talked about to each other? Actually, uh LTT never have any uh, connection with these uh, organizations uh, because uh, from beginning the provider may have the mindset that um, he don't like to have any connection with these groups because uh, 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 maybe uh, he feel this one is a uh, interfere inside the Indian inside India, so that uh, from beginning until the end, uh, no have uh, any connection with us. And after the war, after Prabhakaran was killed, after the end of the war rather, could you describe what happened? When I was in Malaysia in uh, 2009, that uh, uh, unexpectedly that uh, I got arrested in Kuala Lumpur. Then they took me to Sri Lanka. Who arrested you? It's a Malaysian uh, intelligence. But this, uh, actually, that time, the, uh, later on I know, this one is a, uh, um, the Sri Lankan intelligence uh, also uh, worked with them and they, got, uh, they arrested me. And, they took me to Sri Lanka, Colombo. Uh, that time the, uh, the defense secretary was uh, Mr. Kodavaya Raju. And uh, the situation is uh, very bad here because, um, you know, the all medias uh, all created me as a next leader. So the uh, it's a media, so they um, create the image. So this was after the killing of Prabhakaran? Yeah. So when they took me here by Air Langa flight, and uh, first they kept me in a house uh, one, two hours. Then they took me to meet um, Mr. Kordabaya. Uh, that time I, I I feel inside that, okay, it is a, my last moment. Uh, they are going to kill me or something. Uh, but um, I saw the Buddha statue on the ground floor on the Gota house. A statue of the Buddha? Yeah. Like this, they, are, they have the light. So when I saw it's uh, 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 something I feel uh, is uh, different. 
So what was that feeling when you looked at that statue of the Buddha? Uh, I feel something is, uh, uh, it's um, no need to worry. It's uh, uh, something uh, can't happen anything. So it was saying something to you? Yeah. So it's feel that uh, I re <laughs> rebirth again. So I got this, uh, this feeling and when I went to his room, he came and he came from up. I, I shake the hand and we talk. And uh, two hours, more than two hours, we got this meeting and... Um, what did he want to know? Your whole story? Yeah, whole story and uh, where is uh, some uh, LTT carders, people and something about their uh, weapons and assets, something. And, uh, how is the future plan and why Pravar and even uh, at the last moment why he stand like this and fight. And uh, after two hours, uh, say, okay, some officers will take care of you. They, are, they will be with you. If anything, we will discuss time to time. I will call you. Then I uh, went to the another place, and uh, there is in one house in Colombo. Spend uh, I think two more than two years in that house, uh, time to time. I have the meeting with uh, their officers. They came and they go and uh, himself and. Uh, time was run like that, and then I I was in Colombo. It's a uh, with you useless that uh, nobody can get any uh, anything. So I asked uh, finally, I want to do something for <coughs> our community. Then he asked, "What do you want to do?" I told, "I want to run urban Then he said, "Okay." can start. He gave the permission and I start to... So did you set the... this? We are sitting now in the Central Eye Children's Home. This is a girl's home, sir. Yeah. And uh, these children are mostly from where? Who are their... who are their parents? Mostly it's... Um, they they affected from the war. Some children got the single parents. Some children no parents. Uh, mostly they are from this region, Kilnochi, Mullativ area. Uh, we also got another open age in the Mullati, two open age in the Mullativ region. So the most of the children are more than two, 350 children. They are from this uh, war affected children. So every children have a story. Uh, it's. Uh, <laughs> can't imagine how they are, they suffer, that uh, even the, some children, they got the, um, some uh, affected from mentally also, psychological, psychological problem. So, uh, last five years, I am running this uh, children home and I spend the time with these children. And you then went through a rehabilitation process which all ex-carders uh, were put through. Um, can you tell us how, how it felt and, and what exactly they put you through during those years? Actually, the, it's a more than seven years now uh, I am under the, uh, this uh, situation that um, uh, I expect some time that I feel uh, should be free one day because uh, it's a uh, rehabilitation already uh, seven years. So it's enough. I think I am also become old enough. So uh, it's um, come should come one day. But uh, have they treated you fairly? Yeah, that's okay. There's not been any physical no, 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 violence. No, 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 no. And. During your own life with the LTT, if you pardon my question, uh, were you ever involved in killing someone yourself? No, never. I never 
That's she, the weapon. She, I never touched the weapon. Tell us about your presence, sir, your family, uh, your wife, your daughter, where are they and uh, how do they feel now? Do you get to see them? Sometime and uh, these children, <coughs> sometime I, I like to spend more time with them. It's uh, sometimes the difficulty, so it is, uh, I feel sometime, okay, if I am free, I can do. But why more. are you, why cannot you spend as much time as you want with the that, children? Uh, actually, it's, uh, they, uh, they also have the, their life, no, mm -hmm. that uh, I cannot uh, spend all time hours, here. Uh, yeah. And are you allowed to travel to see your family? Yeah, sure, of course, uh, that... Um, as a human, even the, my relative uh, are over there, my mother-in-law, father-in-law, my cousin, nephews. So, sometimes I feel I like to visit. To you have them. not gone back since no, you came? No. Mm -hmm. Not allowed that. Not, not allowed. allowed yet. Mm -hmm. So the funds for this orphanage, all yeah. the orphanages, does it come from your own wealth or does it come because you are supposed to be a very rich man? Oh, this, <laughs> the, this news uh, actually it's uh, uh, something wrong. Uh, we have the well visas uh, from the mostly the diaspora and local people and uh, we collect from them and we run this open age. If I were to ask you after 30 years of war, Mr. Padmanathan, and which ended seven years ago, and if you were to look back, you are now 62 years old, what would you say uh, is your greatest regret? Feel uh, sad. Ex uh, we, uh, actually, the many people, they lost their life their future, their education, their parents, everything, they are even the uh, disabled, everything. Because of this war, I am also one of that. So I feel sad for I, this and I regret for them. And so <coughs> I feel that's how much I can help them. And uh, do you feel guilty sometimes? Yes. Oh, is that guilt becoming less now that you're working with the children and you feel you're putting something back? Yeah, that uh, when I work day to day, then this one go little down because uh, uh, I am engaged with the children and uh, when they spend the time with them. So currently the Islamic State is the big terrorist group that is uh, causing havoc in the Middle East. Uh, what uh, would be your word of advice to the ISIS and do you see a familiar pattern there? As a human, uh, we have to love, uh, love the human. We, okay, everyone has the problem or differences. Uh, it's a nature. The religion have the differences, it's in nature. But we have to love the people. We have to live together, any you know, of that. Uh, whatever the difference, uh, are difference. So the, what the uh, Buddha and uh, what the Vivekananda, what the, uh, even the uh, Quran say, Every religion say the good thing. No one say killing other people. So the whole world should uh, unite it and we have to be, live peace. We have to give the good uh, opportunity to the next new generation. So the terrorism, or killing the people can't achieve anything. You see the what uh, what happened uh, in the Middle East, what happened uh, in the Libya, and what happened in the Iraq. So the um, we can't the it's it's a new uh, world order. 
we can't achieve anything through the uh, this uh, violation. So the we should uh, gi give the chance to the new generation. So, India's Prime Minister Mr. Narendra Modi was here uh, in Sri Lanka to celebrate Vesak, which is the biggest Buddhist celebration. What are your impressions of Mr. Narendra Modi? Does he strike you as a decisive leader who might play a major role in bringing about peace in uh, conflict areas of the world? Yeah, he is a strong leader and um, uh, he is trying to uh, do many things for the India. Uh, he's a moderate leader and uh, uh, his uh, economy policies are very successful in Gujarat. This, um, uh, he needs uh, more time uh, to reform India. Not easy to uh, uh, run immediately. How should he deal with terrorism from Pakistan in our case? There are yeah, yeah, he is very strong and correct that uh, his uh, um, position. So, we anyhow that uh, nobody can allow the terrorism. Sir, if you were to, just to close this interview, yeah. if you were to look into the camera yeah. and give uh, your advice as a 62-year-old father uh, who has uh, caused suffering but and has suffered who has gone from rebel to reformer yourself yeah. what is the message of uh, your experience in one or two sentences for the young people of this country sir sri lanka is a wonderful country okay we as a sri lankan we have the some differences uh, between Tamils and Sinhalese and Muslims, it's okay. But uh, we have to <coughs> find the solution with the peaceful manner, uh, not with the uh, arms. With my experience that uh, we have to uh, work together as a citizen of Sri Lanka, we have to build the peace we have to build the country for our next generation. We have to work together. And that was Mr. K. Patmanathan, commonly known as K.P., uh, formerly with the LTTE, today a repentant father and the head of three orphanages in the northern part of Sri Lanka for World is One, Reformers and Rebels.